Hi, so this is a video for COM 345. Uh, this is for slide set number three. This is part two. This is the part where I'm talking about MFC serialization. Very important you understand that you're not responsible for this part for the exams. I'm not gonna ask questions in the exam about this. This is, uh, as I will say here, Share, share here. Sorry about that. Okay. So, so I'm saying, as I'm saying here, this is kind of a counter example, uh, which I'm using to show that sometimes you may find libraries out there and then you may think this is gonna solve your problems. Yes, it's gonna solve your problems, but it is itself using the library, learning how to use a library can be a problem in itself. Uh, so you will see that one of the goals of the example is to show how peculiar uh, MFC can be. So first MFC star, uh, stands for uh, Microsoft Foundation Classes. So for example, this would be only available if you're using a Microsoft compiler, uh, C++ compiler, such as the one embedded in uh, Visual Studio. So if you take this code and you try to compile it with uh, GCC, it will not work because GCC does not have MFC. So this is about serialization. So I'm sure many of you know how to do serialization in Java very handy and uh, very um, uh, user-friendly uh, kind of way of storing your objects into a file and then retrieve them later, okay? Um, uh, the problem is that you don't have this as a native class in, uh, and, and facility in the C++ language. So it's only available in external libraries. So for example, MFC, has a serialize function, which is a member of the C object class. So what you should do then is when you have your own classes, if you wanna output objects of these members of uh, instances of the classes that you've defined, you want to update, uh, uh, upload them or, or save them, sorry, about in, in some files, then you have to implement the serialize function for those classes. Seems simple, but it's not that simple. Uh, you also have the boost library, which has serialization. There are others, but uh, that's the two um, main ones, uh, most popular ones, I might say. So here I'm gonna show how to use MFC serialization. Uh, there's gonna be some topics here that, uh, some things I'm gonna describe here that's gonna seem outlandish compared to what we do in this course. Yes, that's part of the fact that this is a counter example to show that, you know, here in this class, we're showing you how, you know, what are the good building blocks to become a good solid C++ programmer. That we're not claiming that you're gonna know everything about C++. There's, when you start using it in, in the industry, you realize that there's a lot of things out there that uh, you need to perfect as you are to become a professional solid um, C++ programmer. That's an example of that. Okay, so assuming that uh, for each class that you have, the class would be uh, defined, the members of this class, the member functions of this class would be defined in a CPP file. So for each such CPP file, for which you want to make its class serializable, uh, you would have to include uh, this here line, implement underscore serial, and then the name of the class that you want to serialize. And then here, the second, here, that's what I'm explaining. So that's the name of the class you want to serialize. And then the second parameter is the name of the first non-abstract class in the inheritance chain above this class, okay? So if this class inherits from an abstract class, we'll see that later, and that's not the class you should put as the name of the class you should put there. You should go up the class hierarchy, and the first class you 
encountering the class hierarchy that is not abstract and you should, uh, that's the name of the class you should put there. Another thing uh, is that uh, at the top of the inheritance hierarchy of the class that you want to make serializable, you must have C object. C object is the top class in the MFC uh, class hierarchy. Okay, and that brings another thing which is important in this example is that when you use a library, very often you get bogged down into having to use the classes that are defined in the library. So you have to use more and more different classes and different things from the library as you want to use this library. And sometimes it can get uh, quite overwhelming to have to use so many different things which somehow you feel don't belong to your code, but because you want to use this library, now it must be part of your code. For example, like C object here, you have to use C object in your code, even though you don't want to. If you want to do serialization and use MFC, then here you must use the class C object. So that means that one of your classes in your hierarchy now must um, uh, inherit from C object. Uh, and then the number one here, well, the thing is about this line here is this is actually calling a macro. Well, macro is not things that we uh, cover uh, extensively in this course. It, you seldom see them. Um, maybe it's important to know them when you encounter them, but that's not a, I would say, fundamental building block of knowing how to use C++. What is a macro? A macro is essentially something that is encountered by the preprocessor and that depending on what are the parameters you give to this macro, the macro is going to generate code. It's going to generate C++ code. So essentially this macro here, I don't know exactly what it's doing, but it should be generating code so that the serialization uh, mechanism is uh, implemented and running as you execute your own code. So essentially, you should understand this is it's a macro that will eventually generate code. One of the side effects of this is that if, this, if there's something wrong in this code and you compile the code, if there's a, uh, errors in this code, then it's going to give you errors that pertain to the generated code, which is going to make it so when you get these errors, you don't know what they mean because it's not your own code. It's code that was automatically generated by a macro. Same thing if there's a linker error, even more problematic, okay? So anytime you generated, uh, you, you're dealing with generated code can lead to uh, difficult problems to, uh, to fix because you have to know what the code generator is generating and so on and so forth, okay? First parameter, the name of class you want to serialize. Second parameter, the name of the first class in up in the class hierarchy that is not an abstract class above this class. Third parameter is a, a, a number or an identifier. Um, uh, basically that is identifying a certain class hierarchy or a group of classes. So basically you're giving a name to a group of classes that you want to serialize because there might be different groups distinct groups of classes that you want to serialize in your code. If that is, then you would give them a diff all different number. So that's a group number. Uh, then what you must do is in this class J rectangle, which I have identified as uh, serializable, then you must implement the serialize uh, uh, member function in this uh, class. One of the particularities of this serialize uh, member function is that it receives as a parameter a, an object of type C archive. So now you see that's yet another class that you must reuse from MFC that comes now into your code, such as C object, C archive. So it kind of creeps you know, into your code. That's one of the things I wanna show here. So uh, another thing is that, um, uh, okay, so when you, you serialize the J rectangle object, first thing it should do is to call the serialize of its own superclass. And the assumption is that the serialize of the superclass would also be implemented and would itself call serialize of the superclass until <coughs> up in the hierarchy, 
it's calling serialize of C object. Okay, so there's gonna be a chain of call to serialize and they're all gonna resolve. And the assumption being that each of these serialized methods are serializing the values of their own data members. Such as, for example, the J rectangle serialize is storing in the file, they or retrieving from the file the width and the height, okay, which are the local data members to the rectangle, the J rectangle class. So this calls the superclass serializable. It's assumed that all the superclasses are calling the superclass serializable until the one on the top is calling serialize of the C object class. Then uh, you, because this serialize uh, member function can either uh, output to the file or input from the file. Okay. So depending on what archive mode you define, then uh, it will either store or, or retrieve from the file. So the way you, you figure out if the archive the archive is in storage mode or in retrieve mode is by using the is storing uh, member function of the C archive class. So if you set the C archive as output, then uh, this will be true, then you will output to the file. If it is false, assuming it's be, gonna be assuming you wanna retrieve from the file when you do the, you call the serialize method. In this case, it's gonna retrieve the values of the J rectangle class from the file. So you see that once you <laughs> understand how these things work here, the code that you have to write here is quite uh, simple. Okay, so that's was, that was for what you have to do in your CPP file, basically implement a serialize uh, method or overload a serialize method for your class you want to make serializable. Then in your header file, the corresponding header file of the same code I've just described here, then you would have your class uh, declaration. Then uh, this class uh, here, it's assuming that it inherits from geometric object, which as you may have seen from my example, geometric object is an abstract class. Okay, so that's why geometric object is not the class that there is here, okay? Because it is abstract. Parameter number two is name of the first non-abstract class in the hierarchy. So that's basically assuming that if you would look at the definition or the, the, the declaration of the geometric object class, it would inherit from C object, which is itself not abstract. So as you have defined the serialized method in the CPP file here, it should be declared as being a uh, member of this class. Okay, so that's just the, 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 member, declared, the member function declaration of what you have defined in the CPP file. Then finally, what you have to do is to add this other thing here in your code as a protected member, you are <laughs> using a macro here. So again, this is a macro that would generate code that would put for you some data member declarations here. Okay, so as the, this macro is gonna be executed, it is gonna generate a few lines of code which declare some data members to be added to this class so that, the, so that uh, to make the serialization operation uh, uh, work. So this is essentially another macro here that you're using and the name that you put here is the name of your class, okay. Then when you want to use it, so that's the main function or driver that is using this. So you must declare a the file that you want to open. Note that here I have to use C file. C file again is a class that belongs to MFC. If you want to use MFC serialization, then you must use C file class. Again, another class name that creeps inside of your own code. If you, if you are, were using other file uh, classes previous to introducing this code, and you have somehow to switch to C file now, okay? 
Uh, so you uh, connect this file to a certain file that is in, on your computer or to be created on your computer, depending on what mode you open it. Uh, so here it's basically uh, opening this file in mode create and mode write. So you see that these are all things that you must figure out when you want to properly open the file. What are the file modes in MFC and how you create them and so on. All things that you have to learn as you want to do this, what you think is a simple thing, which is serialization using MFC. Then you have to create your archive uh, object, uh, which is connected to this file and which is uh, set up in, in mode store. Then here I'm creating a circle and a rectangle. That's what I want to output in the file. Then uh, I call serialize on my circle and then serialize on my rectangle, which is outputting these two things in the file with the serialized methods I have defined uh, earlier as I have shown. Uh, then I delete my things here and I close my file, I close my archive and then I reopen it again, in this case in mode read. And I have to create my archive here in mode load. Then I create my empty objects here and then I call serialize to actually populate my circle and rectangle with the values that are to be found in the file, okay? Of course, then the serialize output and the serialize input have to somehow do the kind of a mirror image, an exact mirror image of each other, okay? Very, very careful about that. So this is uh, the end of this example. So again, you will not really be responsible for this in the exams. Um, I'm not asking you to use MFC in the project. Uh, if you want, then go ahead. Um, but that's not, that's not a requirement. The objective of this example was to demonstrate that sometimes using a library to do something that you may think is simple has the effect of you having to, you know, there's a learning curve uh, uh, associated with uh, using a library sometimes. There might be some cryptic things such as the, um, the macros here. You don't really know what they're doing. If you, even if you look at the documentation, it's not necessarily going to tell you exactly what the macro is doing, okay? So you have to somehow learn what to do. You have to trust that it's doing the right thing. If you are doing things improperly, the macros are generating code. If you get errors and uh, as a result of you misusing these macros, then the macros are gonna generate wrong code. When you're gonna compile your code, it's gonna compile generated code, which is wrong. Then you're gonna get errors on the code that was generated, which you're not aware of. So this all creates uh, potentially some problems. That's why macros some people use macros, fine, but it tends to create uh, additional problems. So that's it for this uh, video. See you later.